the difference a quarterback can make. Because we talk a lot about other positions and the line of scrimmage and talent level. But here's the deal, man. There's a couple of teams across the college football landscape to where if you get the quarterback right, it is a powder keg. It's a powder keg. Like some of these schools could just absolutely blow up if they get that quarterback position right to the level that they could get it right. So all the quarterbacks I'm talking about right now, massive, massive potential. The team, which I think arguably has the most potential and the quarterback with the most potential is Notre Dame. Riley Leonard and what he could be in this offense is nothing short of sensational. You saw what Mike Denbrock did with Jaden Daniels at LSU last year. They scored over 40 points a game. Jaden Daniels won the Heisman. He was running it. He was throwing it. Riley Leonard isn't the same kind of athlete as Jaden Daniels, but he still brings some of those things to the table where you better not fall asleep at the second and third level of your defense because he can hurt you. Key pieces back on defense. Xavier Watts, Benjamin Morrison. I think the defense is in a solid spot, even with the guys they lost to the NFL. And that wide receiver room now, there's some guys that can go. They did some things through the portal. Got Jaden Harrison from Marshall, Chris Mitchell from FIU, both guys that are dynamic playmakers. Let's talk about it this way. If you put Jaden Daniels and his production a season ago at Notre Dame, Notre Dame's in the playoff? Notre Dame's at least sniffing the playoff in that conversation. I'm not telling you Riley Leonard is going to be Jaden Daniels, but let's run it through that filter. If Riley Leonard just explodes and has the similar amount of success as Jaden Daniels last year, even in a, even in a similar area code as Jaden Daniels, Notre Dame is going to be a force. And they're absolutely in that 12-team playoff, which we would love for Marcus Freeman, transparently. Another team that needs to be talked about here as a powder keg if their quarterback translates the way that he could translate is Tennessee. Think about it this way. In 2022, did anybody want to see a healthy Tennessee in a 12-team playoff with Hendon Hooker and company? Hendon Hooker, let's say he never gets the knee injury and he stays rolling at a really elite level. He's probably in New York City for the Heisman Trophy ceremony. It's neither here nor there. But like, imagine you see that team in a 12-team playoff. I think you could see a version of that from Tennessee this year with Nico Iamaliava. The number one player in the class of 2023, No physical limitations to his game. He can run it. He can throw it. You saw it in the bowl game with the RPO stuff they did with him. If he's able to hit the ground running and be consistent with throwing the football downfield, this offense is ready-made for him to put up big numbers and for Tennessee to score over 40 points a game. You don't believe me? Look at what last year was. Joe Milton, I don't think he was bad. I think he probably gets a bad rap in terms of how people talk about him. But he wasn't near the productive nature that Hedden Hooker was. Still, what happened? Tennessee scored 30 points a game. 30 points a game. That'll get it done for you in most cases. So if Nico's able to be a version of what we project him to be out of the high school level to now having his first real chance to be the guy at Tennessee, he's going to have a chance. He's going to have a chance. Tennessee's going to have a chance. Josh Heifel, we talked to him a year ago. We also talked to him this year, but we talked to him a year ago asking about how good Nico could be at Tennessee. He said he is as talented as a quarterback as he's been around. Mic drop. Josh Heupel's been around some good quarterbacks. And saying Nico has as much juice as any of them, shouldn't overlook that. To give us a similar translation we saw from Notre Dame and Jaden Daniels, let's try on the Michael Penix Jr. to Tennessee kind of lens for for Nico Iamaliava. If you put Michael Penix Jr. in that offense a season ago, they're probably in Atlanta at least, maybe more. So, I'm not saying Nico has to be Michael Penix Jr. I'm just saying I think when it comes to how he could translate and his talents he has, Tennessee is a powder keg with all they have in that wide receiver room, with how they've improved their defense since Henry Hooker was there. Tennessee is going to be a force if they get that part of it right. Utah, man. Now, Utah, you're saying, wait a second. They're a powder keg team? If they get the quarterback right, don't they already have a really good quarterback? They do. He didn't play a season ago. Cam Rising little medical redshirt action. What if Cam Rising has his best season at Utah? We saw it in 2022. They won 10 football games and made the Rose Bowl. But what if he even ups the ante a little bit? Look at what they have on this roster. A defense that only allowed 20 points a game in a Pac-12 with a lot of good offenses. They bring back 70% of that production. You know what it is with Coach Whittingham. It's a cockroach team. Doesn't matter who's coming back. 
but we're glad they have those guys coming back if we're a Utah fan. doesn't matter who's on that roster. They are going to play the same way. They're going to be physical. They're going to attack you. They're going to be just tough to kill pretty much every single week. It's who they are. But you add in Cam Rising having his best season, Utah's probably winning the Big 12, and they're probably a college football playoff, not just team, but a force in that sense. So Utah, absolutely a team that if they get the quarterback position to blow up how it could blow up with Cam Rising now going back for, I believe, year six, Cam Rising can make all the difference for them. One more team here, Florida State. Very, very careful with the DJU slander, word of the wise. I think that we still haven't seen his best just yet. He got a lot of flack for what happened at Clemson. Went to Oregon State. Clemson got worse, and Oregon State averaged 30 points a game. I'm not saying it was because of DJU, but I'm just saying I think he did his part to make that offense successful. The ACC is wide open. You got question marks about Florida State? Sure. You got question marks about Miami and Clemson, too. Virginia Tech could make a run at this thing. That's how wide open the ACC feels to me. Florida State, they don't have Keon Coleman. They don't have Johnny Wilson. Of course, that matters. But the way that Jordan Travis was able to make that team so successful a year ago, he elevated everyone's play around him. In 2022, they averaged 35 points a game. In 2023, averaged right in that same area, right around 32 points a game. It probably would have been 35 points a game had he stayed healthy and they've been able to finish the season. The bottom line is he kept the offense multiple. He was able to run it when they asked him to. He was able to get the ball out to playmakers and make good decisions. He was able to take some pressure off that running back room when he was able to run the football, which kind of caused the defense to have some other uh, eyeballs undisciplined. DJU brings the same things to the table. He's a different player than Jordan Travis, but I think the skill set could keep that offense multiple like we talked about with Jordan Travis. So I'll just say this. What if DJ Uyunglele hits that five-star threshold that he was billed out of high school? Could be a lot of folks owing him an apology and could be a lot of folks watching Florida State win the ACC for the second year and Florida State finally in the college football playoff and kind of exercising those demons from a season ago. So Florida State and DJU, Utah and Cam Rising, Tennessee and young Nico. Excited about that one. Then Notre Dame and Riley Leonard. All teams that their trajectory, I think, will fully depend on how much they get from the quarterback. But if they get a 10 out of 10 level play from their quarterback, They're all going to be forces in the college football playoff and in that national championship picture. Hey, y'all. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel here to make sure you don't miss an episode of The Hard Count. Also, be sure to check out other videos on the On3 YouTube channel.